What's going on, Jerome's? A Minnesota Fine Vikings back at, uh, at TCO Performance Center Bar and Grill, OTA number five. Oh, ooh, Mambo number five. I feel like we should. Should have incorporated that. Anyways, a couple of Vikings uh, players and coaches uh, took to the dish, feed lo local media jackals. I uh, want to break down a couple things that were said and some stuff and some things and good times. First up, uh, so Josh McCown, great jawline, by the way. Also, do you ever look at someone and you can tell exactly what they're going to look like when they're super old? Well, like M McCown is going to look like, uh, like a beefier version of the dude from Up. Great hair, though. Uh, Vikes fan page. Uh, Vikings quarterback coach Josh McCown on J.J. McCarthy. Uh, he's been very well coached. His knowledge uh, in the classroom of football stood out to us in the draft process. So we really talked about his time in Michigan, uh, time in a pro-style system. And also, I mean, that's what really stood out about McCarthy here is that the transition to the Vikings offense wasn't going to be as stark as, say, a Drake May or a Jaden Daniels or you know player X Y Z because uh, a lot of things that McCarthy did at Michigan, uh, you know, a lot of play action, a lot of under center, a lot of play action boot, a lot of half rollouts, a lot of uh, a lot of scanning the middle of the field. That's exactly what's going to be brought here uh, in the Vikings Kevin O'Connell offense. So uh, he already does have a head start and. Even though I, I do believe in Sam Darnold, like I'm not ready to cut out J.J. McCarthy uh, getting the start for the bulk of the season, but we'll see. Uh, a guy that's going to be catching a lot of balls uh, from either of the quarterbacks, uh, Alec Lewis, the athletic go. Uh, Alec Lewis isn't going to be catching it, although that would be impressive. That would be like a Disney movie. So the the beat writer uh, becomes wide receiver too. Uh, question to Jordan Addison. Uh, can you describe catching J.J. McCarthy's throws? Uh, Jordan Addison, he's got a nice tight spiral, so you got to make sure you can catch it. And also, uh, there's been rave reviews about the velocity on J.J. McCarthy's throws. I, also, I think it was Alec Lewis who even was concerned about, maybe he throws it too hard. There's too much torque. It's like Tiger Woods swing. Although, I, I feel like McCarthy isn't going to be – uh, ha having like a waitress scandal. I don't know, man. It's like Tiger Man, like, mm, come on. Anyways, but, uh, you know, w with Addison, I, I love Jordan Addison, man. And trust me, like, I love me some Justin Jefferson. I love Jordan Addison, too. He's fantastic. He continued, uh, Vikes Insider, uh, Addison playing with McCarthy. Uh, I like him, though. JJ has been playing really well, playing with confidence, anticipating throws, making mistakes, but learning from them. He's got a bright future. And that's the thing, too. That McCarthy, he, he, you can tell, like, he's a high confidence kid, except he's not cocky in that, like, hey, you, you can't teach me. I, I, I know everything, you know, sort of deal. And there's been a number of quarterbacks come through this league that have uh, walked in with that attitude, right? But uh, McCarthy, like, mistakes aren't going to get him down. And he's made mistakes during rookie camp as well as OTAs. And he's a rookie. That's expected. Uh, but he's learning from mistakes and, in general, won't make the same mistake again. So he just continues to grow and show. And I think he's going to be a really fantastic, re re really fantastic quarterback for the Vikings. Speaking of fantastic, so Dallas Turner, Diamond Dallas Turner. That's right, baby. Uh, getting Ray reviews. And he's the only rookie been running consistently with the ones, uh, with Andrew Van Kinkle out with a minor foot injury. Uh, and, and Christian Derrissaw, I mean, he had some hype. Guessing after the Vikings OTA practice day, Christian Derrissaw said, first round pick Dallas Turner has a spin move that's faster than Daniel Hunter's. Quote, I saw him put it on someone else. Derrissaw said, I was like, holy F. End quote. All right. I, and so, so Derrissaw is a pretty mild-mannered guy. But he, you could tell it. Like, he was impressed. He was super hyped, uh, and he had talked about how he had followed, you know, uh, you know Dallas Turner's career at Alabama throughout the years, uh, and how pumped they were to be able to, to get up to number seventeen and take Dallas Turner one five, as he calls him. And Darisa, <laughs> so funny. Darisa made damn sure that people knew that the spin move wasn't on him. It was on someone else. But I mean, Daniel Hunter's spin move, like that was a thing of beauty. Like. Daniil Hunter was a very well-rounded pass rusher, uh, but I mean, I mean, the spin move is pretty damn elite, man. Like as I remember, I think it was Daniil versus Willie Beavers, and it was the first training camp of Willie Beavers' rookie year, and I remember Daniil hit Beavers with a spin move. I don't even think Willie got a hand on Daniil. That's when he knew. I, I, I was like, maybe we just wasted a fourth round pick. I don't know, man. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, uh, Dallas Turner is going to be one to watch. Also something to watch. Uh, Kramer put this up. 
Regarding the Dalton Reisner re-signing, it's my understanding that left guard Blake Brandle will remain with the first team OTAs uh, offense and OTAs. Brandle is not at practice today uh, for personal reasons. Dan Feeney, 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 was with the ones Reisner started 11 games last season. And it'll be interesting to see how things um, yeah, start being divvied out in training camp. I, I do expect the same starting five, uh, Darisaw, Brandle, uh, Bradbury, uh, as well as Ed Ingram and Brian O'Neill to start. But... I don't know, like, Reisner's just there chilling, man. And I, I, I love the competition aspect uh, going uh, into this. Uh, also, some odds and ends. So, Addison uh, talked about working on his technique, working on release in year two. And it's great because Addison had a, f a very solid rookie season, uh, but it's great that he's not resting on his laurels. He knows he has to up his game uh, if he's going to be running mates uh, with Justin Fringer Jefferson. Uh, McCown praised the growth of Sam Darnold. It's funny talking about how, his time with the Jets and Darnold was just like uh, always on in his hip pocket trying to get better and stuff. And also, <laughs> he said like, it's not really a, like a, a little brother. Uh, it's not like a little brother or a son relationship. It's more like a nephew. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, but he also talked about the maturity and growth uh, of Darnold a, as a player. Uh, so I, I you know, McCown obviously... Uh, you know, since they crossed over with the Jets, I I, I do think that McCown sees a little something something in Darnold. Uh, also, he was very effusive in his praise of J.J. McCarthy. You talk about how he's grinding, putting in that work, and I think the Vikings quarterback room is going to be good to go. Uh, Byron Murphy Jr., not Byron Murphy the second. Uh, Murph was talking about how he's hyped to play uh, more man under Flores. Uh, that's been a talking point. The Vikings, uh, they, they blitzed a ton. They also had a ton of zone blitzes. Uh, they were one of the highest zone coverage percentage uh, teams in the league last year. Uh, Going to get more aggressive, play more man this season. And Murph is all about it, man. And he's hyped up. Like, he wants to play inside, outside, wherever the team needs, uh, needs him. Also, he's got major respect for Jordan Addison. Um Basically, he was saying that yeah, you got to bring your lunch pail every day against Jordan Addison or he could embarrass you, and, the, and that's certainly high praise. Also, Murph loves having Shaq Griffin on the squad. Uh, talked about how uh, Shaq started out in Seattle, was a one-time Pro Bowler, was great in the – uh, the Legion of Boom Redux uh, secondary uh, towards the end of the Legion of Boom era. Uh, and Murph was at UW at that time, so in both of them in Seattle. So he was watching a great cornerback play up close and personal. Uh, so he was really hyped to have Shaq on the squad. Also, Griffin... <laughs> All right, so Griffin, uh, aggressive scheme fits perfect with what with his mentality. So again, that speaks to the Vikings playing a lot more press man this year. Also, it's one of the reasons why Griffin did sign with the Vikings. Plus, he also said there's a lot of comedians in the locker room, which is hilarious. And also, uh, second year linebacker Ivan Pace Jr. So. They asked about him wearing the green dot uh, last year as a rookie, and he really enjoyed that process uh, where he said that he was a coach on the field, lining up the defense, having to read the offense. Uh, he says it was great for his uh, for for him learning on the job. Now, you, you could tell that Pace was a little bit put off uh, when reporters were asking if he was going to wear the green dot again this year because – so throughout like the OTA videos, it's been Blake Cashman, uh, the pride of uh, Eden Prairie, Minnesota Golden Gopher, uh, coming in as an inside linebacker, effectively re replacing Jordan Hicks. He's been wearing the green dot. Now, we've seen comments that says that Pace has been wearing the green dot at two, so maybe they have multiple ones, uh, but I haven't seen that. Uh, and by Pace's comments, it sounds like, uh, well, Pace was just like, well, you know, if the team wants me to, I'll, I'll, I'll wear the dot. But it, it, it sounded like he wasn't too thrilled uh, about the uh, about the whole thing about potentially losing the green dot and then going to Cashman. But I'm sure he'll work it out. It's a, he's a pro's pro, but also super confident. I, I, I love Ivan Pace Jr. Like he's going to wreck this league uh, in year two and going forward, especially, ooh, especially if they don't have a blitz as much. Pace can just do his damn thing. That's right. That's right, man. Uh, anyways, uh, that's it. Uh, Vikings uh, Wednesday OTAs press conferences. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But next time, Skull Production Value.